Hello and welcome to another video from the Micro Rooster. Today's topic is dossiers. In MicroStrategy 10, the later versions, a dossier was released. Dossier is a replacement for the traditional dashboards that were built with Visual Insights. Dashboards, uh, they are being renamed as dossiers and more functionality is given to them. They are renamed to dossiers to differentiate them from the pixel perfect dashboards that are built through the desktop and web. Dossiers are purely web versions, are used by the users or by the developer to create real-time analytics. So we'll start with some of the basics. We'll walk through pretty quickly and we'll try to cover as much topics as we can in this overview. You will see the create dossier. I expect this to change in later versions. The style and the formatting will improve. But for starts, when you sign in to create a new dossier, you will see this layout. The first thing you want to do uh, is trying to add new data. You can add new data just like Visual Insights from the multiple sources. And if you're not sure how to, watch our other video with Visual Analytics. Uh, we have multiple Visual Analytics reports that will go into more detail on adding new data. For existing data sets or existing reports, it's simple. We're just going to click here and we're going to find something. I'm using the tutorial, it's customer analysis income analysis. I also have the ability to add multiple data sets. Let me go and add another data set. Go and create a from an existing data set. Regional. Now notice it automatically knows that region and region is linked so I can do a join between these two tables. I can control the join behavior. This is primary. But if I want to make one of them an inner join, so I can make this a secondary, which limits the second set based on the data coming from the first set. I could always do that. It'll limit my relationship, or I can make them both outer join. It's up to me and up to how I use this report. Once I'm in here, one thing I like about this is you can edit the data set from within, which means you're not modifying the report, but you can modify. So it's actually going to give you Warning, you can keep the changes local or you can modify uh, the data set. So it's up to you. In this case, I'm just going to go and modify the data set. So there's the revenue in this. Uh, let's add from time. I'm going to add the month and let's add one more metric. Let's change this to metrics. I'm going to go to our customer analysis metrics or our sales metrics. And let's just uh, for demo purposes, let's add profit. Okay, I could also filter the data as it's coming in. So let me take a quick look. I can base it on one of these items, for example, year, and I can say, well, I don't want this year. I can include or exclude any year that I want. This is uh, again not in list, include and exclude anything that's coming in from the database. In my case. I don't care I'm gonna keep all the data so I'm gonna cancel this but and you can add more qualifications more filters to your process this means that your data being pulled from the servers or from your files it can be filtered as they come in which makes runtime faster this is perfect in a case where you want to limit your data so I'm done with this I'm gonna run the load so now my modified data set is in now notice the next tab right here or next panel right here is showing you something called contents, chapters, and pages. This is nothing more than a modified view of the previous dashboards, but it's pretty flexible. So first of all, we can give our reports, we can select the URL, or we can choose from a predefined selection. And this is a context uh, page or pan that shows us all the items that we have. Each sheet is now a chapter and each pan is a page so it's kind of a new way to look at the data and actually more useful so i can add more pages i can also rename them obviously so i can rename them as uh, start okay and then you can rename each page separately you can also move this pan in the top as sheets or the bottom as sheets like the top they'll move right here or you can move them to the bottom right here if you need the space or if you're you prefer the tab oriented uh, pans or you can keep them in the list view okay so 
enough with that part I'll show you how to interact with these in a moment but let's just start creating something quickly so if I have let's just do year and region and then I'm going to add profit revenue very simple report so very simple the basics the swapping I can add filters here so I can do something like this where the year and I can change the style to be a checkbox and I can control what's being displayed at the runtime I can go to the settings and modify my settings for each piece the header the rows and the values there's a lot of these settings colors format fonts etc I can also create a new visualization so let's create another one and let's just put an income bracket okay and revenue something simple all right so also we can add a filter that's being displayed on the screen itself so let's just add a filter and I'm going to add region here and select target let's just select both of them and apply all right so now I can either all or I can choose one at a time and it'll change accordingly it's now or I can change it to a different style the button bar depends on how much real estate you have this allows selecting one at a time we can rename our visualizations we can we can have this change from include to in exclude we can change the display form we can change the targets we can format this so we can format everything as far as the colors and everything else okay let's, let's graph one of these things and let me graph let's just do a bar graph see how this looks like all right let's go back to the visual let's uh, take the region out for now let's just do year so we have the multiple years let me take one of these and keep profit so this is a basic bar right here and now what I can do is I can make this a selector and have it select different information from a different graphic so let's go to this right here and I'm going to add year because I want to just show you how the selection works make this a selector so I'm going to use this as a selector and a select target here but instead I'm going to do a highlight instead of a filter and I'm going to apply this okay and actually let's just put the year back and now notice when I click on one of these the associated ones are highlighted automatically so I'm doing a highlight here which is making this interactive pretty cool actually so it ties everything up and then I still have the filtering capability which trickles down through everything okay so that's pretty simple and do a little bit more formatting let's add revenue to it now notice it automatically splits the axis to two different items we have the profit and the revenue the two different uh, metrics but notice that it is keeping this metrics names in, in the vertical if you want to merge metric and put it in the break by and by doing that I'm actually merging the two axes and it's defaulting to stack but I could have done absolute which puts them right next to each other or percent to total which is going to just show the relevant values I could usually this absolute or stacked is the more useful one okay there's also something called size by size by is a little tricky so if you use size by let's use it by profit it's actually think about it is making the size of each of these bars related to the profit so it's kind of giving them a, a ratio of size or the width and in this case it might not be that useful but if you're using circles or something else or areas it might come in more handy okay and we can add some more items in the tooltips if we want if we're not satisfied with what's being displayed here the legend we can hide it and we can remove it completely we want to display this for easier display we can just expand and then, and then again we have the ability to change the data source if we wanted to use a different data source we could export this simply and we can and this I like this one that we can see the query so it's going to show you the SQL and you can actually copy the SQL if you're trying to test it in a lower environment or a database so there's the SQL associated with this 
it gives you an explanation of what's going on. So we can we can change different things here. We can change reference lines. We can add trend lines. We can modify the title and container properties, legend, shapes. So this is a bar, I could have changed it to a line, etc. So you can modify these things right here and change the colors, etc. of each series one at a time. And you can choose from the visuals or the custom visuals that you have. So let's go to a different page, something like year, month, region, and then revenue. I could use this to interact with the other page. Select target. From this, I'm gonna control page one, this visual, and I'm gonna apply it. This appears right here. I can edit my targets. Notice that the highlight option is not available. Uh, it's only available within the same page, which kind of makes sense, but it's not available from one page or one chapter across the other, okay? All right, so let's show this in presentation mode. So, so now if I select both and I go to target, it's gonna select both years, and I still have that ability to switch here because I have this right here, one versus the other. 2014 and 2015. Okay, let's look at creating visuals as filters. So for this one right here in the filter, let me add a visualization filter. I'll show you how this works. This is a visualization that you can create, but it's also, also or only used in the filter. So let's just do this, something simple, year, region. I could make some more modifications on this information because it's treated just like any other visualization but for simplicity I'm going to keep the basics to make it more colorful and I'm going to save this presentation mode I can go to the filter right here if it's not displaying and start a selection and choose one or many so let's say say center mid atlantic northeast and I want it just for two years done so now it's going to filter everything from my visual light filter right here and unset the filter and it brings everything back. All right, so that's very simple. Also similar when we did the selection and we, we did the go to target, if we have this visualization here and we select one, two, three, four, done. And then I select my two years and I go to target. I can reset this filter right here on the fly as well. So I can go back and clear all, and now I get all my data back. So even though I'm connected and I'm interacting, I can always unset a target. A few more items to cover. We have this view right here, which is you can expand things and cover things up to do full views, and it's called the responsive preview. So you have the ability to go back and forth for while you're editing your stuff. But if you want things to be grouped together so that doesn't happen, you can click on the responsive view editor and group things together and now these two items are one unit and this uh, takes effect automatically with screen resolutions so with screen resolutions things might move around if they're too small this will hold those two items that I grouped together as one unit I'm not sure if this is super useful but it seems to be a feature that uh, would be helpful especially if you're using an iPad or an iPhone you noticed how when we added data, there was the option to add data from new data and from existing data sets, but there's also the ability to build your data set within. So you can actually just build your data set as you go without starting from a report, which is pretty cool because sometimes you just want to add something on the fly. Like let's just say you want to add year and I add a filter based on year and I just want to create some quick report for those two years save and let's just do one of these count metrics number of customers and and now i have a new data set available for me to create or to utilize so i can add it anywhere i want so now we can add more data sets as we go in memory we can embed images text boxes anywhere we want and we can add pages sheets right from here there's also a few items right in the view that you can hide and present, or you can use these right here to do the same thing. You can also share by an embedded or a link. So if you share a link, I have to save it, it's saying. So let me save it, run newly saved. And then I can share by getting a link and I can associate who, who, who do I want to access this link. 
or I can embed it if I was embedded it in a frame so I can grab the frame and place it in and if you have a single sign-on uh, on your internal network then people don't need to log in but if they don't then they will have to log in so if I copy this and let me just open up something and log in it should take me right there and depending on the properties that I gave I could tell it full control or just view only or modify so I could have the user just be able to run this and not be able to do much changes to it so it depends on the properties that I give and that's from the share I also have the ability to do a general formatting either on the colors in general or the dossier so I can control the overall feel and look you can still customize each and every item but I can change everything right up from the top just to control the overall everything kind of like look if I needed to make a change for all the fonts or all the colors etc so that was formatting and I can change the default colors this will show up in my colored graphs things to think about here is you can export to PDF which is pretty simple just click on the export to PDF you can also and this is pretty cool you can download the dossier so let's do download and it's going to try to download it here into .mstr file you can zip this file or you can email this file to anybody that has MicroStrategy access and since if you if you have a secure user ID for that user make sure that the user knows their user ID to access it okay and they can open it in MicroStrategy desktop or the web version depending on what environment they're opening it typical MicroStrategy stuff we can schedule we can send now you can create a personal view the benefit of creating personal view let's say somebody creates a dossier for uh, a department and you want to just do some more clicks and filtering but you want to say you don't want to save it as on top of it so you can create a personal view and you can name your dossier with a time and date that way you can remember you know yesterday I did some analysis and I found some interesting features or some information and I can save that as a snapshot in time we can look at some dossier properties which is pretty nice we can set this to as it's similar to the cube concept you can have it to refresh every so many seconds so that if there's more data coming in we can have it being refreshed um, and then it's telling you do you want it to be allowed do you want designer to, al to allow joining on uncommon attributes unrelated common attributes why not and then the inheritance properties of the project level settings usually you want to have it selected but you can deselect it and modify in the presentation mode you will have a lot less but you will still have the ability to hide this and only display the information you still all the interactivity and the ability to exporting each item at a on its own or exporting the whole dashboard we can go and share it from here and uh, we can refresh or have it automatically refresh we can make selections and undo our selections we can keep the filters or hide the filters depending on what page you want you can control filter display and not you can remove those selections on the fly okay so there's pretty basic very simple and very useful and the idea is here you want to create more chapters and have them all linked together so you can create sort of a story and your story gets weaved in by connecting your targets and sources together some some shortcomings of this so you know how this is a selector right here but I want to modify this selector my select targets and this is my target but if I wanted to target something in a different page so I'm going to a different page and select this item and apply now if I go to this page right here and look at the targets edit targets this is no more one of my targets okay so if I modify my target to a different page I lose my target within the same page now you can control multiple visualizations from one but they all have to be within same page for some reason it doesn't let you control the visualization internally in one page and externally at the same and I believe the reason is because that functionality where you go to target if it allowed you to control multiple pages at the same time this will get really confusing because when you click go target should it go here should it go to page two or should it go to page one so one target you can have the sources all on the same page but you can't have the sources of your targets on multiple pages again I don't know if it's a feature or shortcoming or by design but I believe it might be have to do something with the go to targets limitation well thank you very much and hopefully you enjoyed this quick overview 
of all dossiers functionality released in the latest MicroStrategy 10 versions. Thank you very much and have a great day.